Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to A Clash of Kings 3.0. Now, when we left off, we had, you know, just been running around, taking care of business, and killing a couple of bandits, making sure that we get enough money to be able to purchase a really nice weapon. And, unfortunately, Lorath was, well, under-equipped, I suppose you could say, with the weapon department, so I decided, hey, you know what, it's probably a good idea to go to the north and maybe get something there. So I purchased something at Fair Market just now. I've been running between Salt Pans and Fair Market for the most part, and as you can see, I have another delivery of a fine bag of salt, and yeah, well, that's the thing. I actually have not delivered to Fair Market before because I thought to myself, yeah, it's probably not a good idea to go here, so I went to King's Landing, and I think I also went to Stumbleton, but other than that, I haven't really been anywhere else, so yeah. But the trading, which one of you mentioned in the comments, is fantastic. So thank you very much for letting me know about that, because really that helps a great deal. And that means that we have enough money to get this. Yes, it's a balanced glaive. Now, this isn't technically what I was thinking of when I decided, hey, I'm probably going to go for a polearm of some sort because I actually wanted a poleaxe, and there is such a thing as a poleaxe in the game. I actually saw it, I believe, I think, hmm, in one of the northern towns, I think, but it just had such slow speed, such low reach, and it didn't really have a very good swing damage either, that I thought to myself, yeah, it's probably a good idea to go for something else, and so I went for a glaive instead. Hopefully that's going to pay dividends in the future. So, while I have been running around, I did take care of a small band of raiders, and I did actually level Elias up with that, which is actually really nice. So, let's see here. Yes, we're going to sell the bags of salt here, and I'm only going to sell about six of them, because otherwise they depreciate in value very, very... Really, you only have 717? Oh no, that's terrible. Okay, I'm going to have to buy a couple of things from you, apparently. Yes. Oh, uh, you already have a bag of salt. That's the reason. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, so let's just buy the bags of grain. Okay, that's all I can buy, basically. There we go. Okay, well, that didn't really help much, did it? Well, kind of, a little bit. So, yes, also, we are very close to Raven Tree Hall, and while I would love to be able to recruit some archers from there, we currently still have an absolutely full army, and I'm thinking maybe we're going to lose a couple of people, but I, I don't actually know what. I mean, everything seems relatively high level here, so I actually don't know whether we're going to do that, because the Merman crossbowmen, they're fantastic. I mean, otherwise we only have veterans and elites. Apart from the Pentos man-at-arms, I could probably lose two of those, but that's not really going to make a huge difference, is it? And we do have Vale Longbowmen already. Maybe I want to get rid of the Hedge Knights, because obviously they're making our wages absolutely insane. Obviously along with the Caravan Masters, but if you just take a look at their stats, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I can't even believe it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of something to take into account, I guess. But otherwise, let's just level Elias up here. Now, what are we going to be doing? Hmm, that's the thing. I guess more strength would do quite handily. I, I was thinking of actually getting some more intelligence, because another pathfinding point would actually be quite useful. So, maybe we should do something like that. Yeah, okay, let's go for some intelligence. Let's go for another point in pathfinding. And probably, are we going to go for some more persuasion? No, it's kind of pointless, I suppose. But we'll go for trainer instead, because we are getting to the level now where it would make a pretty significant difference in how quickly we level up recruits. So, I think that's kind of nice. So, shall we? Uh, I just don't want to lose my cavalry, you see, because as soon as... I lose the Hedge Knights and the Caravan Masters, I'm going to have no cavalry whatsoever, which would be kind of sad, I would think. So anyway, let's go over to Maidenpool and try and sell some salt. All right, well, while we were on the way there, I thought maybe it's a good idea to test out our new weapon. So let's just, let's just do a little bit of a battle here and see what's going on. Now, I have done, obviously, as I say, I've done one battle off screen and... These cavalry are absolutely amazing. They really are very, very good. So having them available is really nice in comparison to obviously not. So <laughs> yeah, who would have thought it? 
Having cavalry is better than not having cavalry. Ah, yeah. Wow, that's very, it's very insightful. Very good. Good, good job, me. Okay, well, let's just take a look and see if we can. Whoa! Do you see that? That's exactly what I mean. The damage that this is able to inflict is absolutely insane, especially to enemy cavalry. So basically, any enemy cavalry, we may as well just sign their death warrants right now because they can't do anything against us. We can literally just stand here and take no damage because anyone that tries to charge at us, we're just going to do a thrust and it's going to be game over. So it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. Also, otherwise, I did manage to make a pretty decent profit by selling a couple of things and obviously selling my prisoners as well that I gained in the previous episode. And I was able to sell them for about 1,300 and that gave me about 4,000 total that I needed to purchase, well, obviously on top of the loot as well, that I needed to purchase an oil press. So I actually did buy another oil press. Hilariously enough, the oil press seems to be the best enterprise because it seems like the ironworks only gives about 60 most of the time and everything else, apart from the weavery and dye works, of course, gives less than that. And that is kind of weird to me. So I decided, okay, let's go for the oil press again. And let's just hope that that actually pays off. Okay, so there you go, another hedge knight. Oh, really? Okay, next thing next thing you know, we're going to be getting hedgerow knights. Yeah? No? Yes? No? Oh, well, anyway. Yeah, bad jokes aside, I'm going to now head on to Maidenpool. We took a bit of a detour here, so yes, let's, let's just go over there. I'm, I'm wondering whether we can find a really big bandit party or something. Oh, yes, I must also mention, right, let me just, let me just sell here. Uh, yes, there we go. Okay, so I'm got to make sure. Yeah, look, do you see the prices? Do you see? Look at that. That's absolutely amazing. I think that that is a really, really good way to make money. So if any of you don't know about this already, I'm pretty sure most of you do. But, you know, if you don't know about this, I didn't know about it. So, yeah, maybe you don't. And you could just go to salt pans. You can get salt and you can just sell it anywhere. And that's thanks to you in the comments. So thank you very much. And, yeah, speaking of comments, as I was about to say, I've just got to inform you that I do read all the comments, but do bear in mind that there are many, many, and some of the time I will forget one or two, so if there is any particular tip or anything, there's it's most likely going to either slip my mind, unless it's something specifically that I'm looking for, you know, like for example, pole arm locations that I was looking for, so, you know, a couple of you suggested the north, so I went to the north and I took a look around, so that was kind of nice, also one of you suggested Lorath, I believe, took a look at that, obviously that didn't that didn't pan out, salt pans, uh. All right, so I think on top of the things that we're currently doing, obviously they're a little bit, you know, a little bit tedious, a little bit boring sometimes. I mean, I actually don't mind making money that easily because obviously it requires no effort whatsoever on my part, which is always nice. But I thought we may want to participate in a bit of a tournament here. So let's take a look. Two teams with five fighters each, obviously now, we are given some armor, but I'm going to be using my own weapon. And now that we have a pretty decent weapon, I thought to myself, yeah, let's try and see if we can do a good job. Yeah, there we go. Look at that 72 damage we just dealt. That was amazing. Oh, unfortunately, this guy is probably going to defeat me in battle very easily unless we get range on him. Yeah, almost. There we go. We took him out. Okay, now, if we can get this guy, then that would be great. Yeah, come on. Ah, there we go. That guy's helping us. Fantastic. Okay, do bear in mind that I can switch to my sword and shield, which might be a nice idea. So let me just remind myself that there is that option. I'm going to actually just hold my people back here. <laughs> We're going to be sneaky. We're going to be sneaky because we want everyone to meet in the middle and we want them all to kill each other. And then we'll mop up the rest. We'll kill the survivors. Yes. I'm actually just going to go and head in here and see if I can do some damage. Yeah, nice damage. Oh no, he's got a pole arm as well. Oh, that's terrible. We killed him at least. He's got a huge two-handed sword, but we killed him, so that's nice. And my entire team is perfectly fine, so that's nice. Oh no. Okay, go guys, go, charge in. Oh no, this is this is this is not going to go well, is it? Oh no, it did kind of go well, so that's nice. Oh, do we do we win? Yep, seems like it. Very good. Okay, so let's place another one. Two teams with four fighters each. Hopefully they're going to give us the same layout. Yes, they are. Okay, so wait, it's two teams with four fighters, so it's basically just a 
team versus team situation, which is kind of sad, because I would have liked to have had a similar situation to what we had previously, but okay. Ah, that's bad. Okay. Well, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and push them in this direction. Ooh, that was my bad. Well, after that rather devastating loss in the tournament, I thought that was kind of annoying because they all had two-handed weapons and it was just... Uh, I, made a, I made a pretty grievous error there, but it's okay. It's okay because we, we, we basically lost... What did we lose? 400? I think we only lost 400, so that's really not a big deal. But now we are in Essos. I've traveled to Essos because I thought to myself, yeah, it's probably a good idea to head over here. Maybe we'll make enough money in next week's wages. I hope so, at least, to be able to afford another oil press or maybe something along those lines because we want to get a good enough margin to be able to start saving up because right now our profit margins are actually pretty decent because, of course, we are having our mercenary wages and they are basically paying all of our you know all of our troops wages which is fantastic so if we can make good use of that we might actually be able to actually start saving up and maybe invest in the iron bank obviously oh really i am literally being attacked by everything right now but okay look at how many of them we are killing right here yes kill this no no you will not take me alive I'm sure they mean to not take me alive though, so it's absolutely fine for them. Oh no, see, they're just too fast. They're just too fast for us. Oh, that is terrible. Absolutely too fast. I think that, isn't that a scythe? I think that is actually a scythe, but it's fine because we took quite a few of them off their horse. But look at that. I think, isn't that a scythe? I mean, no, it seems to be a glaive actually. Oh, it's a, a hooked bill or something? Mm, well, whatever the case. We've lost a couple of units now, and maybe that will mean that we can go back to Raven Tree Hall and maybe purchase a couple of those archers. Well, there we have it. The last Dothraki unit has been eliminated. Unfortunately, we really got, I mean, we got taken out there, but we do get to now rescue an unsullied unit. I'm actually kind of surprised that they had this, but I thought to myself, yeah, it's probably going to be one of those opportunities that you're not going to get very often, so... I mean, look at that. We got an Unsullied unit for free, basically. Of course, we did lose a couple of units, and, well, Elias' dignity is no longer there, but uh, I think that was pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable trade. All right, so after our battle with the Dothraki, and Elias not really being very happy with me, he decided that he would like to join Bravos instead of Valantis. So, as you can see here, we will now be joining them. Oh, yes, I'll join Bravos. Yes, there we are. Fantastic. Okay, so now... Oh, no. That is... Uh, uh, oh, no. That's not very good. But we do get 1,400 coins immediately off the bat. Everyone hates them, apparently. So this is... Mm, that's going to be... It's going to be pretty tricky, isn't it? Okay, so what do you need? You need these guys. Oh, no. I can't accept that mission. Thank you very much. Now, this is exactly the reason why I really love to join an Essos faction. As you can see by the... Ah, the messages just disappearing there. Everyone has made peace with us, or most of them have made peace with us, and that means we just gained an amazing boost to right to rule. And if we just take a look here, I was just waiting here for some time just to restore our HP, but if you take a look here, where are we now? Uh, well, you can see our honor rating and our character renown and everything, but if you take a look here, we have a right to rule of 42. I think we need to get about 50 to be able to stand on our own two feet, as it were, but for the most part, that's great. Now... I foresaw the fact that Elias wanted to join Bravos, so I bought my oil press here a number of days ago. I'm actually unsure when it's going to be up and running, but hopefully soon. And hopefully they'll be covering my entire... Well, my entire wages. That would be kind of nice. Okay, so we do have a couple of prisoners with us. Yeah, 400 for 7. That's actually not bad. We do have a companion here. Ah, you have 1,500. Ah, this is the first companion that we're ever gaining, so maybe it would be a nice idea to take him, but 1,500 is pretty expensive. And I didn't I didn't really want to go for that. Does he have... Does Is he a... Is he a oh, he seems to be a companion as well. Oh. That's a bit too expensive as well. While I would like to... 
it seems, uh, oh no, uh, this guy is the unsullied seller, yes he is, okay, unfortunately I will not be able to, oh wow, it's only 4,500, huh, oh wait, is it, no wait a minute, that's a different guy, I think that's actually a companion, and the other guy has a similar name, I keep getting them mixed up every single time, but anyway, that's absolutely fine, and we now have access at least to the Iron Bank, which is obviously what matters. I thought, what better way to test and probe our enemies than to abduct them in the middle of the night? No, that's the alien way. But this is Elias's way, which is, of course, to attack one of their patrols and to test their various units' capabilities. So let's have a look and see whether we'll be able to attain victory here, because obviously we've only tested our metal against bandits, and even though they may be relatively decent bandits, we have not really been given a chance to test ourselves against the vassals units that we may be fighting. So I've decided to, to obviously try a Norvos patrol here. And wow, okay, the horse is already dead there, and there we go, there's a nice bit of damage there as well. I think I'm going in a little bit too... Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought to myself, I'm going in a little bit too strong here, but no, no, it seems like it doesn't really matter because look at that, look at that damage, that's amazing. I really like going against cavalry now because it is just so incredibly easy for us to kill them. Now, this is a problem. Yeah, this is going to be quite a problem, I think, because these guys have pole arms as well and they're going to deal a lot more damage to our horseman than I would like, so need to be a little bit careful about that. Also need to stay quite far back with this. Need to be a little bit more careful with my positioning. I think that's the main thing with pole arms positioning, because with a sword, you know, or a mace or anything like that, even a two-handed, you can basically just head in wherever you want, and it doesn't really matter, but it seems like the pole arm requires a lot more forethought and that's probably the reason why I've always been terrible at them, because usually I'm just like, mm, yes, let me run in here and kill these interlopers. But no, no, it's always, it's always kind of a brainless act instead of, you know, thinking about it first. But obviously that's just because I want to have fun and, you know, charging straight on in there is kind of fun, even though it may be foolish at times. But yes, I think it's actually, actually really cool to play with a pole arm. At least it makes destroying cavalry a lot easier. So we did lose three there, but hopefully, are they are they going to have any prisoners? No, they, they have one. <laughs> really, really. We captured a farmer. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of, it's kind of not, not too good, is it? All right, so yes, as you can see here, look at our weekly budget. It's absolutely insane. The oil press is doing amazingly at King's Landing, as well as at Bravos, and we are gaining about a thousand per week, which is great because in the previous week, before I had my oil press at Bravos, I was making about 80, which is kind of hilarious. I suppose it's because King's Landing had a slight problem with being attacked all the time. So that might be a reason why building something like that there is not really a good idea. Also, I did have extreme wages. I think I've actually lost a couple of hedge knights, so that maybe makes a bit of a difference. So, yeah, as I've been waiting here for some time, waiting for my wages, actually, I'd like to be able to see, okay, so I have 5,400. Maybe we can go into the Iron Bank and just invest about a 1,000 in there, because I just want to make sure that we have a little bit going. You know, a little bit going. We're currently offering a 2.5% return rate on deposits. Yeah, that's acceptable, I suppose. So there you go. You lost a thousand coins. Can I do anything else? Yeah, I can deposit another thousand if I so desire. But no, I am going to just leave a thousand coins there. Hopefully it will appreciate a little bit while I'm running around doing things. Oh, by the way, we're on about day 72 now or something along those lines. So it's uh, it's, it's going okay. It's going okay so far because... This army right here is probably not capable of taking something, and I mean besieging something, obviously, because it's just it's just too higgledy piggledy. It's it's basically units from everywhere, and if I were to actually take some units from Raven Tree Hall and from Carhold and just go to those places over and over and over and over, I could have an archer only army or something. Could probably head into the nearby Sisterton. And I could probably take that pretty easily 
but I don't know, I kind of want to see what happens organically a little bit more, and I may, that may sound incredibly, well, pretentious, but yeah, yeah it's kind of the, the sort of natural gameplay loop that I like to like to look at. But anyway, I think that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.